Speaking Human. Today on Speaking Human, we grab some groceries off the shelf and run out of the store without getting arrested thanks to Amazon Go. Then we sweat it out as we answer five burning questions about the Amazon brand. A microscopic Amazon drone will deliver this podcast to your eardrums. Shazam! Thanks for your order. Speaking Human. Welcome to Speaking Human, where we simplify the world of marketing for humans. I'm Shad Conley, and with me as always is my co-host, Patrick Jever. How's it going, Patrick? It's going even better now that we're talking about Amazon Go. Which is going to get everybody going who's listening to this. Patrick, let's start it right off with a bang. We're going to answer some hard questions today. So let's start with a hard question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Here's the setup. So Amazon calls you up and they want you to participate in this beta test. And here's what happens. Every product in your house, everything you own is taken away and replaced with an Amazon product, for better or worse. Your smartphone, your computer, your TV, your coffee maker, your vacuum, everything you own. Would you do it? Is Amazon listening right now? Of course they are. Well, then yes, I'll take that deal. (laughs) Here's my question. Would I get to keep the Amazon stuff? I'd say you could have the option at the end. You know, they can be like, you want your old stuff back or you can keep it or you can keep some of it, you know, but it's a year. It's a year long. Did I mention that? Well, here's the thing, though, like other than the technology itself, right, like Alexa and the Fire tablet and all that stuff, everything else on Amazon, it could essentially be the same vacuum, right? I just get a new one because they sell everything. Well, this is, I'm assuming it's all Amazon versions of things. Let's say they go into making everything because they do everything now. So they go into making all these products themselves. Picture everything to be connected, but it's all made by Amazon. That's a tougher yeah, question. So it's not necessarily the brand names you know and love. It's all <sighs> something new made by Amazon in a lot of cases connected to their infrastructure. That's a tough question, actually, now that we dig a little deeper into the details. Get the specifics of the program, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd say probably I'd try it. I don't know. What happens if I say no after two months? Once you're in, you're in. I don't know. Would you do it? I would do it in a heartbeat. Would you? Such is my loyalty to the Amazon brand, or my trust, I guess I should say, my trust in them that I'd I'd make the leap. It'd be a little scary with some things, but I'd be like, eh, Amazon knows what they're doing. They'll make it worth my while. Yeah, but have you seen the Fire Phone? Ah, yeah, it looks a little junky. Their hardware itself, not great, but it's designed to be cheap, right? So that's why it's not necessarily great most of the time. But I guess if we're using hypotheticals and we're saying that they're making all this stuff, then I would say that they're probably at a point where maybe they're making better quality things. No, it's all garbage, but it does really cool things. (laughs) If it's all interconnected, right? That's kind of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of the premise, you know. It's Amazon tends to find a way to make things better for people, right? The experience better. So you can expect you'll get, I would expect anyways, a good experience. Maybe not the best hardware, but a good functionality or experience out of that stuff. I'm sort of on the fence there. It is a tough call. I I think about giving up my like smartphone for an Amazon version that I'll probably like best, but then I can think of five other things in my house that I would love to have Amazonized. Well, like what? Give me one. So say, for example, if you get an Amazon refrigerator that automatically order things when they're done and they just come so you never run out of certain things. Or the printer, so you're out of ink, it like automatically orders ink so that you have it and you never run out. I think of the Amazon process automating itself. Yeah, I do like that. The refrigerator is pretty awesome. Essentially what Amazon Go is, right? Only it's in your home. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. So yeah, it's a tough question when you think about all your stuff and you're like, oh man, there's bound to be some you'll like less, but is it worth it for this experience? A year's a long time, but I'd at least try it out. I'd probably go with it. Yeah, I do like Amazon stuff. Generally speaking, their hardware is pretty good. I'd say pretty good. Yeah, like I said, I think they're more known for their experience and the benefits as opposed to like hardware, but they're even coming along in that realm. You know, while we're talking about it, what's your kind of connection or your family's connection to Amazon? Is this a brand you're like strongly connected to or is it like, eh, obviously you're aware of Amazon because everybody is, but what's your usage? Yeah, I think everybody and their brother has had an Amazon account, probably ordered something through them at some point, wouldn't you think? It's got to be a high number of the population at this point. I don't know. Isn't Amazon like 20 years old at this point? With Prime and everything, there's just everybody I know, you know, is, is using Amazon in some capacity on a regular basis. Yeah. 
Personally, my family, we have auto shipments that come to us each month with like vitamins, which is a cool service if you haven't tried it. Auto shipments is uh, by far one of the most convenient services that they have. I feel like anything I order now, I always check Amazon first. Is it cheaper? I know I can get it fast. It comes in two days with Prime, so it's probably one of my strongest brand connections at this point in my life. Like something I just use so often and go to so much that it's really become almost a key part of my life, which is why I would dive in on the uh, beta program where they take over my home. The main key word there is convenience, you know, like they just, it's so easy. And granted, you know, most of the stuff you could find on Amazon is most of the time cheaper. The other thing too is I also received an Amazon Echo for my birthday. Mm. And now pretty much everything about my family is being recorded continuously throughout the day. And Amazon knows how <laughs> hot or cold I like it in my house because I connected my Nest thermostat and it's controlled by Echo now. Oh, did you connect them? I actually also have an Echo and a Nest and I haven't actually connected them yet, but that seems really cool to me. Let I like the idea. I like the idea of telling machines to do things for me. Yeah, it's pretty cool when you go turn up the thermostat to 70 and it does it. So futuristic. Yeah. We'll be answering some more tough questions about Amazon in a little bit. But first, Shad, let's talk about Amazon's latest game-changing innovation, Amazon Go. Let's keep this moving at a good clip. It's called Go, right? Four years ago, we started to wonder... What would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. That was an audio clip from the Introducing Amazon Go video, which gives you an idea of the basic premise behind the brand's latest shopping innovation. So let's talk for a minute for people who don't know about Amazon Go or haven't heard about it yet. What is this thing, Patrick? What is it? Imagine walking into a store, grabbing what you want, and just leaving the store. That sounds illegal. It's called shoplifting. Unless you weave machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric <laughs> of that store, then it's Amazon Go, baby. There's a fine line, right? Maybe that should be their marketing tagline. It's like shoplifting, dot, 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 but legal. And that's where I broke out the three things that they detail out in their Amazon Go video, which is machine learning, which most people don't necessarily know what that means, but it gives the computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. That in and of itself blows my mind. Algorithms that can learn from and make predictions on data without any programmers behind the scenes, that's insane to me. I mean, the whole thing's kind of crazy, right? To back it up a little, basically what it shows in this Amazon video is you have the Amazon Go app on your smartphone. So you like fire it up when you're gonna go into this store it gives you like a code that you scan as you walk through a turnstile. And then from there, you know, you put your phone away. You just grab what you want off the shelf and leave when you're done. The crazy part to me is that it knows what you grab when you grab it. And it automatically adds in your virtual cart. Once you leave there, you're paying for whatever you have. But it knows what you take and it knows when you put it back. I don't really understand how that works exactly, but it's kind of amazing. You know, we talk about innovation all the time on Speaking Human, man, and they've just innovated all over the place to make this store work, you know what I mean? Without people. I mean, there's got to be people in it, right? But Well, yeah, especially in this phase where it's just one store in Seattle that's the test store. Yeah. Right now it's just open to Amazon employees, but it's supposed to open to the public sometime soon. So are there like cameras all over the store feeding this information to the machines? has to be. I mean, I'm assuming there's probably cameras watching do yeah. everything. The Amazon Go Seattle store, soon to be the headquarters for the Robot Rebellion. It's Skynet. <laughs> it's basically. But the whole concept of it, even if you watch that video, it's simple in a way, but it seems so cool. You could just go in, grab the stuff you want and leave. Talk about convenience and automation. I mean, that's it, right? Yeah. And it's an introvert's dream come true, right? Somebody who doesn't like to interact with human beings. I mean, you're just like, ah, gotta go shopping. Never have to talk to a person. I think their dream would be you don't even have to go to the store. They just send it to your house. Well, that's Amazon. No matter what level of 
being introverted you are, you have a solution to fit your needs. Yeah. Amazon, enabling introversion since 1997. I don't know if that's when I started. But yeah, it's a cool thing. You know, it's one of those things too, I often talk about on this show, you know, with innovation, there's some areas where you see all this, you know, super innovation happening all the time. And then there's other areas where you just don't see much like grocery stores until now, you know, this is a big leap forward. I talked on our cool episode about the grocery pickup, which was a thing that's becoming more and more common. And I think more big grocery brands are going to adopt, but this is going to another level and doing something different, which is speeding up the grocery shopping process. It's an extension of the self-checkout, you know, a lot of grocery stores have. I'd even go as far as saying it puts Amazon in line with what Apple did with music and iTunes. You buy mm. music and movies and pay Apple for it, and now you, you're you buying all of your grocery products and you'll pay Amazon, right? Not Giant Eagle, not Publix, not Piggly Wiggly or whatever. I mean, to me, that's genius because now they are the hub for all of these things that you pretty much need in life, right? And that's kind of the Amazon method, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they did with the Kindle and they've done with all these different products where they become your go-to, no pun intended, for these sort of things, you know, where it's like, we'll pay whatever to set this whole thing up, but then we're gonna have them in and we're gonna make all the money. But it's also one of those things, I guess you kind of hit on it. Is it making it so easy that people will, you know, impulse shop a lot more when you go into like an Amazon Go? When you don't have to see what you're actually paying, isn't it easier to just take the whole shelf and knock it into your cart? Totally. I mean, I think it's going to revolutionize how much more people are spending at the store. You know, you take out of the equation all of budget conscious people and leave in all the people who aren't that great at sticking to their shopping lists like most. And you've got an environment ripe for overspending. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, at least my prediction is that people will tend to think less about what they're spending when it's charging their Amazon account. And then later on, get the bill and be like, whoa. Yeah, maybe. That's the thing with credit cards and things like that. People tend to get in debt because it's a cycle. That's true. You don't necessarily think about specifically what it's going to. You just see that in total. Yeah. You know, maybe at Amazon's just a small piece of what you spent that much. So you don't actually look into what you were actually spending it on. Yeah, and by that time, it's too late, right? You're past that. You got to go on to the next thing. You got to go to the Amazon Go store again because you're hungry. <laughs> you need food, so. Yeah. If I lived down the street from an Amazon Go store, I feel like I nonstop be just running in and out of there. I want some Skittles. Let me just pop into Amazon Go. Oh, I need a sandwich. There's nothing here to eat. I'm going to go grab one from Amazon Go. I was going to say, I definitely think it's going to take time to perfect this, though, because while it seems effortless and fluid in the ad for Amazon Go, I think it definitely hasn't accounted for the incredibly non-tech savvy people in the world. You know, the, the people who can't even open the app, for example, you know, like that's the part where you're going to have a big learning curve for those people. One of the things I noted was there's still just a lot of questions like what about people who come in who don't have the app? Do you have somebody standing there who's like, you need to download the app? Or what about people who try to jump the turnstiles and just come in? I mean, how do you manage them? You know, how do you manage that? You know, if you think about it, something that could become a controversy, I guess, is this technology has the potential to put a lot of people out of work. Yeah, well, that's a huge one. I guess you could just divert all of the money you would be spending on having people at the checkout lines and maybe put it into like security guards who would tase people when they jump the turnstile. <laughs> I think that should be automated. I think you do something wrong, you just get immediately tased by a robot. <laughs> Hold on, I left my phone in the car. Too late. This is all a big mistake. I can't compute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in theory, you know, they could be like, all right, we're going to use all these people in other ways. You know, if they're not going to be cashiers and baggers and, and managers, you know, we'll have them stocking or making fresh food or adding these other great things. But I don't know that they'd all do that rather than just rake in the extra dough. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe this technology then progresses over to other stores. So it's not even an Amazon store, but you're using Amazon Go technology. Yeah. I could see that. You know, that's something I could definitely see if this catches on and becomes the big thing I think they want it to be. A while back, we talked about some of the, like the biggest innovations of the 2000s or of this new century. Do you think this will be that game-changing innovation? I think it has a potential. It's taking something that we take for granted every day, adding a level of simplicity to that whole process. Yeah, which if you have kids and you're going into a grocery store, sometimes, man, do you want to speed up the process? Me and my wife, you probably do the same thing. How do we always pick 
the worst, slowest line <laughs> in the store on checkout. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like groceries law that no matter which line you pick, it's going to be the slowest one there. Eliminating that potential to me is remarkable. Yeah. I think there's so many people in that same predicament. So I think a lot of people are going to embrace it as it becomes bigger and bigger. I agree. You know, last thing we'll touch on here before we get into our burning questions is do you think it ties in well with Amazon's brand and what they've done to this point? Yeah. I mean, creates another level of convenience that you expect from Amazon. Yeah. And while it's outside that kind of, you know, virtual space they usually work in, for the most part, it does. It seems like a logical fit. It's speed and convenience, like you mentioned. It's what they're all about. So I think it fits pretty well. So with Amazon moving one step closer to world domination via Amazon Go, we thought we'd dig a little deeper into what makes this brand so successful and what the future might hold for the innovative online retailer. In a minute, we'll answer five burning questions about Amazon. No, not Samsung. But first, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. Today's episode of Speaking Human is sponsored by Monsters Unlimited, a creative agency with a business brain. Monsters Unlimited specializes in brand strategies. If you want to build a strong brand like Amazon, you need an agency that understands the intricacies of your brand and what will ultimately make you successful. For more information, visit thinkmonsters.com. All right, Patrick. So what we're going to do now is play a little game of question and answer focused on some of the different facets of the Amazon brand. It's going to be intense. You're going to sweat, but I think we can make it through. Shad, if you could sum up what Amazon does so well in one word, what would it be? And why has the brand been so successful? My word would be integration. Because all of their products and services, all the different tentacles and arms of Amazon, they're always connected to that larger whole, both brand-wise and technology-wise. You know, you think of things like Prime Video and music streaming. They've taken these separate services and connected them with the Prime membership and what people mostly join for free two-day shipping. And they've integrated these things in there so that people are adopting them and it's becoming part of their system. They do that with every service they build for themselves. You know, they created these fulfillment centers to get all these products out fast. And now they sell that service to business. They created these cloud computing and web services that they use for themselves. And now they've sold those to businesses. So it's all connected in this amazing way and integrated together. So integration is my word, Patrick. What's your word? I focus more on the word convenience. Uh, And I've said it many times in the podcast already. It's not about the stuff you can buy through Amazon. You can get the things you buy on Amazon anywhere, right? And that's the whole shebang, right? The convenience that they've built into the brand, you know, your buying, your shipping, your expediency, your return process. And I think that's why people buy things through Amazon is because of the convenience. And then you couple that with the customer service and how easy it is to even return things. This is the thing with buying things online is that if you make it hard for people to return products that they don't want, people won't tend to buy those products again from that online retailer. They just won't because they're always afraid if it's hard to exchange it or return it, they're gonna go somewhere else and buy something else where it's very easy to return it and get something that they actually want, you know? So it's that convenience factor, I think, is uh, what they've done so well. Yeah, I think that's a clear, you know, main tenant of their brand, and that's been there since the beginning. Glad you mentioned the customer service angle, though, too, because every customer service interaction I've had with Amazon has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, everybody's like, takes a while to do things. If I need a refund or something, they just, like, instantly give it to you. They're just so fast and easy. They don't, like fight with you about anything they just give it to you i mean where they've innovated in technology they've definitely been very innovative in just the way that they handle customer service yeah undoubtedly undoubtedly so let's reach into the question hat here again and pull out our next question again in one word 
What do you think is Amazon's biggest challenge moving forward? It's funny. I'd say technology. While it might be one of their biggest strengths, because it is, technology is definitely one of their biggest strengths, it is also one of the biggest challenges. And here's why. I think Amazon is ahead of where technology is currently. So it's a challenge. It keeps them from moving forward at the proper pace of the company. You know, it has to slow down and figure out ways to innovate in the technology field to solve its own problems to move forward, right? So while technology is a great strength to the company, it can also hinder its accelerated growth. It's a good point. You know, it's a good angle and, and way of looking at it, especially for a company so reliant on technology. Mm -hmm. What would you say in one word is their biggest challenge? My word was speed, which, you know, seems crazy because that's one of their biggest skills and benefits is speed. But can they keep up this rapid pace of innovation? How long before someone moves in position behind them moving faster, right? Because they've established this bar of innovation and service that's so high and so ahead, they need to keep moving that forward. That's a hard thing to do, especially at the rapid rate that they've been doing it. As you touched on your last answer, rather than providing unique products or services, their whole thing is they offer a better experience. Mm -hmm. So the challenge for them is maintaining that level of better and constantly moving that bar forward. And as they stretch out into these new areas, that's going to be even harder for them to do. Yeah, I agree. What's better than two-day shipping? One-day shipping? Same-day shipping? Well, that's one of the things. You know, you get to a point eventually where it's going to be hard to keep raising that bar. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to tap out at some point. And I think that note is a good lead into our next question, isn't it, Patrick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you had to pick Apple, Google, or Amazon, Shad, to invest all your money in right now, which one would you choose and why? This is all my money, every cent I have. Everything. <laughs> invest it all, Shad. This, this is a good question, right? It's a tough one. All great companies, well-known brands, but I think I would go Amazon. My reason is I feel like they're just the strongest at this moment. They kind of have the strongest sense of identity and the most loyal and set customer base. So I think Apple and Google are experiencing more growing pains right now, kind of trying to figure out what those brands are going to be moving into the future. So they're just slightly unsteadier at this point, even though they're both great brands, both beloved brands who do a lot of innovative things. I think Amazon's currently in the best position. That could change any day, but right now, they would be my pick. A lot of love for Amazon right now. I noticed. I noticed you have this romance going on with Amazon. I wasn't aware of until this episode. Well, you know, they have robots standing here right now holding both my arms. <laughs> <laughs> Their drones are here outside my door with lasers threatening me. So which one would you pick, Patrick? Where's your money going? Probably Amazon. Honestly, only because they have such a solid foundation as an online retailer. I mean, can you buy stuff online without going through Amazon? Sure. Will you pay more? Probably. But Amazon is insanely good at what they do. Yeah, definitely true. But man, what a slap in the face to Apple. What a burn for the brand you love. I do love Apple. But the interesting thing about that brand is that the core is still very much the same. The core? Well done. You like that? I'm always trying to throw those in when I can. Well done. So we talked a little bit about Amazon, you know, and all their various many innovations. What do you think has been Amazon's most important innovation to this point? At least today, it's about their remarketing. Think about this, Shad. When the last time you visited a website and searched for a product, and then you possibly looked for it on Amazon, and then you browsed the web, what popped up? Ah, uh, ads for Amazon? Yeah, ads, ads for that product and links back to Amazon to buy it. And I think they've just perfected this tactic. I'd say, I think the remarketing is one of the best and brightest of their innovations. That's a good one. You know, not something I would have thought of, but definitely has an impact. Can you remember in your mind the first time you saw one of those? Well, people still, like, that don't know how that technology works, they still are creeped out by it. So Yeah, it's kind of one of those mind-blowing things that I just feel like your first experience with it, it's like seeing a ghost. 
And from a technology standpoint, it's not like it's crazy new technology, but it's definitely innovative in that way that they've integrated it everywhere and seeded it online so that, you know, it follows you. Yeah. They own a large portion of the internet. Yeah. What would you say is the most innovative thing? I had to go with the prime two day shipping. That to me has just been such a game changer, not just in the sense you're getting all these things in two days, which is fast, but the fact that it's changed customer expectations. When I go and order things online now, I expect them in two days. All these other companies, all these other online retailers have to live up to it. And they can't because they don't all have the shipping capabilities that Amazon has. Fulfillment universe they've set up across the country to get everything to people within two days. So that to me has just been a huge game changer for them and a huge marketing win. You know, whenever you can make people expect something of your competitors that they can't live up to, that's a pretty good marketing move. Yeah, absolutely. And think about that subscription model, you know, so you pay for that Amazon Prime, mostly you get that free shipping, right? What does that make you do? It makes you inevitably buy more things so that you're getting your money's worth on shipping, right? Mm -hmm. So you're buying more. In the end, they're winning because that you're buying more things through Amazon. It's an insanely genius way of integrating people into their ecosystem. Yeah. And you feel like you're getting free shipping, but you're really not. But then you expect free shipping from the other guy. Yeah. And then you come back to Amazon going, well, I could get it on Amazon and it'll come in two days, right? It's a smart move all around. So what new service would you most like to see Amazon launch next? There's and no limitations to this, by the way. You can go out as far out as you want. As long as they don't create a service called Quickster, they'll be fine. Which they should, because it's a great name. <laughs> well, I'm going to go pretty far out. But not that far out. My answer is teleportation. I like that. I like that. Right? It sounds crazy, but it only makes sense that the company focused on making life more convenient and getting things to you faster would jump in this arena. This has Amazon written all over it. You get packages in an instant. You know, just stick them in this teleportation porthole, they come out right to you. And then they could use, like they like to do, take this technology they develop and sell it off, you know, and make money on it in other ways. So then you have, you're applying it to human travel, right? Before you want to go anywhere through your teleportation device, you have to buy a ticket from Amazon. Say I want to go to Europe, I got to buy a ticket through Amazon, then I'm allowed to use the device to do that. All that right. would be huge. Big money maker. I, th I feel like that's where Amazon should be focusing their attention right now. Well, you know, that's the key to my heart. You know, I've said this many, many times. Teleportation is the future of the world, of humankind. We could get Amazon. To, I don't care who's doing it. Just do it. Just do it. Make it happen. But it would be awesome, the ultimate solution, which is teleportation, right? If you order something online and it's instantly there, I mean, instantly, you can't really get much better than that. I mean, nobody's ever going to go, can you get it to me <laughs> faster than instantly? <laughs> can you get it to me? It's like uh, Minority Report. Can you get it to me before I order it? We'll consult the oracles. Precogs. Yeah, that's right. The precogs. Yeah. So here's what I'd like to see Amazon launch next. What is it? With every Amazon Prime subscription, space travel. So $99 mm -hmm. a year, your Amazon Prime equals one round trip flight into space and back. Take me to space and deliver me back safely home. Now that's Amazon Prime shipping at its finest. What if they just, here's what they should do. As a business, you know, you get a one-way trip with your subscription. <laughs> yeah, well, that would make a lot of sense. But to come back, it's $9,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people are like, ah, when am I going to get this for half off? I do like so adding that additional service to your Amazon Prime subscription, though. It's a good tie-in with the Blue Origin, and especially, you know, you want to get that service to take off. Easy integration to get people on board. Literally. If I can get a trip to space and free two-day shipping, here's, that's here's, amazing. I think that's worth it. Yeah, I think so too. Chad, I think we've answered all the burning questions. Been an interesting conversation. So many cool facets. I can't wait. When they come out with their space travel or teleportation prime service, we'll talk about this again. Let's jump into our top takeaways. So here's my final thought for businesses looking for Amazon-like success, Shad. Diversify. If you look at Amazon, they're a superb example of a business that has diversified over time. 
They started off as an online bookseller and they grew into a retail king that rules e-commerce with powerful authority. Not only does it grow 20% year over year, it's an empire that continues to innovate and diversify, not just selling books anymore, it sells everything. And on top of retail, it's now building rockets for space travel. It might seem like too much, but if you want the world at your fingertips, then you have to envision a world that needs your business. To become a global powerhouse like Amazon, of course you have to have strategy, you have to be innovative, you have to excel in just about everything you do, but also you have to diversify. You have to find new ways that your business can solve human problems. And maybe that means you'll build rockets, or maybe you'll find ways to solve other common everyday problems. You choose, but the key is to diversify. That's a good tip. It's a good way to think about things. So now I'll contradict that a little bit. For my <laughs> focus, don't diversify. For my top takeaway, I figured I could tell you how and why your brand should be more like Amazon. And while there's certainly things you can learn from how this beloved brand operates, like what Patrick just mentioned, let's be real. Amazon is operating on a whole other plane of existence than 99.9% .9 of businesses. So instead, I thought I'd focus my takeaway on something more practical. Consider how your business can put Amazon to work for you. Maybe it's using their cloud computing services to provide better web experiences, or using their fulfillment services to get things to your customers faster, or gifting your employees prime memberships each year as an added bonus, or publishing your own business ebook on their platform, or if you're based in Seattle, creating an Amazon Go inspired giveaway where you award $500 Amazon gift cards to potential customers. With everything Amazon offers, the options are abundant and beneficial. So ask yourself, what can Amazon do for you? That's a great takeaway. And like you said, and the options are endless. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely... Amazon can be a real asset to businesses in a lot of, a lot of different ways. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can use it if you think about all these things they offer and how you can integrate them within your business. There's a lot of benefit there, a lot of potential benefit there anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I like our pairing there. Usually we're more on the same note here. We went bigger and smaller together. So the combo, it's just a winner, people. So that's it for today's episode, everyone. You can find current and past episodes of the podcast on speakinghuman.com. While you're visiting the site, sign up for weekly email updates on the latest podcasts, articles, and videos. Let Speaking Human come to you. Email us your thoughts on today's show or let us know if you have a topic you'd like us to cover on a future episode. Email feedback at speakinghuman.com. That's feedback at speakinghuman.com. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of Speaking Human. Catch you then, humans. Speaking Human. <laughs>